So I'm Emily Maste, and my project is Automated Airway Score of Lung CT. And it's actually kind of funny because Bethany just had her whole entire project on how we should train humans better and get away from complicated math programs. And my project is creating a mathematical program to get away from humans. So, um, so my project specifically looked at automated scoring of patients with cystic fibrosis. So cystic fibrosis, or CF, is a um, genetic disease with more than 90% of affected individuals dying from respiratory failure. The origins of cystic fibrosis are unknown, but impaired bacterial killing, unwarranted inflammatory response, and abnormal mucus com composition um, all contribute to the foundation of cystic fibrosis. So in the lungs, mucus clogs the airways and bacteria gets trapped. And this bacteria infects the airways and decreases the elasticity. So when you breathe in, your airways should expand, and then when you exhale, they should go back to a smaller size. Well, in cystic fibrosis patients, that going back to smaller size doesn't happen. So airways stay widened and damaged. And this widening of affected uh, airways is known as bronchiectasis, and it's a prominent characteristic of cystic fibrosis. So this is a CT slice of a normal patient. And it's really hard to see the airways, and they're really, really small, and that's normal. This is a patient with cystic fibrosis, and the airways are, like especially this one, are huge and they're dilated. So someone who has more cystic fibrosis will have more bronchiectasis, and their airways will be larger and more visible. So a current technique for determining severity of cystic fibrosis is through the Brody score. And a Brody score requires a human reader to manually go through each slice of the CT and look for differences in um, bronchiectasis. Some of the things that a person has to look at, oh gosh, are how far the airways are from the edge of the lungs and look at the tapering pattern of bronchus. So they want airways to get smaller as they reach the edge of the lungs. And then they also look at the bronchio arterial ratio, so we want the centers of an airway to be smaller than its accompanying vessel. So if the airway is larger, they count that as being bronchiectasis. It has been determined to be an effective way of scoring for cystic fibrosis, however, there are some disadvantages. It's really time consuming and it is limited to the expertise and bias of that individual reader. It's also subjective, so when a person's looking at it, they can go, oh, it's kind of bigger than the vessel, it may not be bigger than the vessel, so that sort of um, independent, like not being dependent on it is, makes it subjective instead of objective. So the purpose of my project was to develop an automated program to generate automated airway scores and then to validate that airway index with the Brody bronchiectasis scores in patients that have CF. So to create this program, I used machine learning. And machine learning is a pretty complicated process, so I'm trying, gonna try to like simplify it. So let's just say we have two features, feature A and feature B, and for this example, we take the height and weight of every person in this room. And we graph them on this really nice scatter plot. And then all of these people would be, let's just say they're all female, and those, oops, those are all the males. And the program would create some line or decision-making process that says, hey, any person who's on this side of the line is probably a female, and any person on that side of the line is probably going to be a male. And so if a new person walked into this room and we didn't know their gender for whatever reason, and we took their height and weight, and we plotted it and it was right there, the program could then say, hey, I think this is a female. So that's the basis of my project, but instead of having a female group and a male group, I had airways and non-airways, and then instead of having only two features, I had 412. <laughs> so I gathered a bunch of airway images from uh, previously segmented uh, lung CTs, and then a bunch of non-airway images, and totaled about 48,000 images. The features that I used, well first, an image is just 
a matrix of pixels. And pixels are a visual representation of numbers. Yes, Dr. Salcedo taught us. Um, <laughs> So the features that I used and extracted from that was the mean pixel value, minimum pixel value, maximum pixel value, and standard deviation, and then a nerdy math thing called Hessian matrix, which looks for edge detection, and airways have that distinct airway wall, so that's what it'd be detecting, and then another nerdy math thing called histogram of oriented gradients, which looks at curvature. So airways are have a circular, ovoid-shaped, and the histogram of oriented gradients kind of detects that curvature of the airways. So after I had all 48,000 images and all 412 features, the program then made a decision-making tree to predict airways and non-airways. So my program was able to read in chest CTs and then scroll like this with a window to grab regions of interest or ROIs. So all of those red boxes represent a image that the program would later test for an airway or a non-airway. The same features that I just talked about were extracted from all of those images, and then the program was able to compare those numbers with the previous images that it had seen to make predictions on airways or non-airways. So this is a visual output of the uh, results of my program. So all of these colored areas are where there are known airways. So we had already known that they were there. And the green crosses are where my program predicted a uh, location of an airway to be. So there are definitely some that aren't correct, but overall it is correct. To get an actual automated score, I created an AAI automated airway index. And that's the total number of regions the program predicted an airway to be over the total number of tested images times 100. And I took that for all of the CTs and then correlated that with the Brody Bronck Directed Score. So it's the automated score compared with the manual scoring technique. And there was a correlation of 0.69, which was super awesome and super encouraging for future directions, and which may, means that a higher AAI, ha, the patient has more bronchiectasis, which means they have a more severe cystic fibrosis lung disease. So in conclusion, machine learning for automated airway analysis was positive and encouraging and should be used in the future. And um, automated CT analysis also may be useful for long-term clinical trials. So right now they have to depend on one person sticking with them the entire time of the trial, which could be two months, it could be three years, you don't know. And then that puts a lot of pressure on that one person to consistently make the same type of score over this entire time. So an automated program, they would be consistent, objective, and the same type of scoring over and over again. And kind of goes back to what Bethany just talked about, the intra-reader and intra-reader. And also, automated programs could be more sensitive to subtle changes within the lungs. So if you have a CT scan of a patient who's one year old, and then they come back a year later and get another CT scan, an automated program could detect subtle differences like, oh, they decreased or they increased in cystic fibrosis lung disease, while a human reader would look at it and be like, eh, it looks about the same. So these are benefits for looking in the future for automated airway analysis. So any questions? <laughs>